Robert Henry Dick, May 6, 1916 to March 4, 1997, was an American physicist who made important contributions to the fields of astrophysics, atomic physics, cosmology, and gravity. Topic <inaudible> Biography. <inaudible> Born in St. Louis, Missouri, Dick completed his bachelor's degree at Princeton University and his doctorate in 1939 from the University of Rochester in nuclear physics. During the Second World War, he worked in the radiation laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he worked on the development of radar and designed the Dick radiometer, a microwave receiver. He used this to set a limit on the temperature of the microwave background radiation, from the roof of the radiation laboratory, of less than 20 kelvins. In 1946, he returned to Princeton University, where he remained for the rest of his career. He did some work in atomic physics, particularly on the laser and measuring the gyromagnetic ratio of the electron. An important contribution to the field of spectroscopy and radiative transfer was his prediction of the phenomenon called Dick narrowing, when the mean free path of an atom is much smaller than the wavelength of one of its radiation transitions, the atom changes velocity and direction many times during the emission or absorption of a photon. This causes an averaging over different Doppler states and results in an atomic line width that is much narrower than the Doppler width. Dick narrowing occurs at relatively low pressures in the millimeter wave and microwave regions where it is used in atomic clocks to improve precision. Dick narrowing is analogous to the Mossbauer effect for gamma rays. In 1956, about two years before Charles Hard Towns and Arthur Leonard Schallau filed their patent application, Dick filed a patent titled, Molecular Amplification Generation Systems and Methods with claims of how to build an infrared laser and the use of an open resonator and the patent was awarded on September 9, 1958. He spent the remainder of his career developing a program of precision tests of general relativity using the framework of the equivalence principle. In 1957, he first proposed an alternative theory of gravitation inspired by Max Principle and Paul Dirac's large numbers hypothesis. In 1961, this led to the Brands Dick theory of gravitation, developed with Carl H. Brands, an equivalence principle violating modification of general relativity. A highlight experiment was the test of the equivalence principle by Roll, Krotkov, and Dick, which was a factor of 100 more accurate than previous work. He also made measurements of solar oblateness which were useful in understanding the perihelion precession of Mercury's orbit. One of the classical tests of general relativity, Dirac had hypothesized that because the gravitational constant g is very roughly equal to the inverse age of the universe in certain units, then g must vary to maintain this equality. Dick realized that Dirac's relation could be a selection effect. Fundamental physical laws connect G to the lifetime of what are called main sequence stars, such as our Sun, and these stars, according to Dick, are necessary for the existence of life. At any other epoch, when the equality did not hold, there would be no intelligent life around to notice the discrepancy. This was the first modern application of what is now called the weak anthropic principle. In the early 1960s, work on Brand's Dick theory led Dick to think about the early universe, and with Jim Peebles he re-derived the prediction of a cosmic microwave background having allegedly forgotten the earlier prediction of George Gamow and co-workers. Dick, with David Todd Wilkinson and Peter G. Roll, immediately set about building a Dick radiometer to search for the radiation, but they were scooped by the accidental detection made by Arno Penzias and Robert Woodrow Wilson also using a Dick radiometer, who were working at Bell Labs just a few miles from Princeton. Nevertheless, Dick's group made the second clean detection, and their theoretical interpretation of Penzias and Wilson's results showed that theories of the early universe had moved from pure speculation into well tested physics. In 1970, Dick argued that the universe must have very nearly the critical density of matter needed to stop it expanding forever. Standard models of the universe pass through stages dominated by radiation, matter, curvature, etc. Transitions between stages are very special cosmic times which a priori could differ by many orders of magnitude. Since there is a non-negligible amount of matter, either we are coincidentally living close to the transition to or from the matter-dominated stage, or we are in the middle of it, the latter is preferred since the coincidences are highly unlikely an application of the Copernican principle. This implies a negligible curvature, so the universe must have almost critical density. This has been called the Dick coincidence argument. 
In fact it gives the wrong answer, since we seem to be living at the time of transition between the matter and dark energy stages. An anthropic explanation of the failure of Dick's argument was given by Weinberg. Dick was also responsible for developing the lock in amplifier, which is an indispensable tool in the area of applied science and engineering. Some believe that Robert Dick deserved a Nobel Prize just for the invention of such a powerful and ubiquitous device. Many of Dick's experiments capitalize on lock in in some way or another. However, in an interview with Martin Harwit he claims that even though he is often credited with the invention of the device, he believes he read about it in a review of scientific equipment written by Walter C. Mickles, a professor at Bryn Mawr. Dick is also credited with the invention of a kind of radio receiver, called a Dick radiometric receiver, or simply Dick radiometer, developed by Dick during World War II. His radiometer was characterized by a noise temperature calibration technique using a switchable resistor, known as Dick Resistor. In 1970, Dick was awarded the National Medal of Science. In 1973 he was awarded the Comstock Prize in Physics from the National Academy of Sciences. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage and family life Dick married Annie Curry in 1942. Curry, of Scottish descent, was born in Barrow in Furness in England in 1920 and as a young girl immigrated to Rochester, New York, via Australia and New Zealand, of which Annie had very fond memories. At the beginning of World War II Dick was asked to assist the war effort by applying his skills to the development of radar with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Therefore, this is where they began their married life. During this time, Annie became friends with a number of the wives of other professors working on similar projects. However, due to security concerns none of them knew what their husband's work entailed and could never discuss it. At the end of the war, Dick and Curry moved to Princeton, New Jersey, where Robert was on the faculty at Princeton University. Dick died there March 4, 1997. Curry continued to live in Princeton until 2002. For the last years of her life she lived in Heightstown, New Jersey at Meadow Lakes Retirement Community until her death in 2005. They had one daughter, Nancy born in 1945, and two sons, John born in 1946 and James born in 1953. At the time of Dick's death they had six grandchildren and a great-grandchild. Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Dick, R. H. April 1981. Seismology and Geodesy of the Sun, Low Frequency Oscillations. Proc. Natal, ACAD, Psi. USA 78 4, 1989-1993. Bibcode, 1981PNAS.78, 1989D. DOI 10.1073, PNAS, 78.4.1989. PMC 319,267. PMID 16,592,998. Dick, R. H. March 1981. Seismology and Geodesy of the Sun, Solar Geodesy. Proc. Natal, ACAD, Psi. USA 78 3, 1309-1312. 1981PNAS. 0.781309D. DOI 10.1073, PNAS, 78.3.1309. PMC 319,117. PMID 16,592,985. Dick, R. H. The 26th of April 1974. The Oblateness of the Sun and Relativity. Science. 184, 4135, 419 to 429. Bibcode 1974 Psi. 419 d Doi 101126 Science. 184.4135.419. PMID 17,736,508. Dick, R. H. The 25th of August 1967. Solar models. Science. 157. 3791. 960. Bibcode. 1967. Psi. 957. 960 D. 
doi 10.1126 science.157.3791.960 PMID 17792834 Dick RH the 9th of November 1962 the Earth and cosmology, the Earth may be affected by the distant matter of the universe through a long-range interaction." Science. 138 3541, 653–664. Bibcode, 1962 sci. 1368653 d. doi, 10.1126, science.138.3541.653. PMID 17829699 Dick RH the 6th of March 1959 New research on old gravitation are the observed physical constants independent of the position epoch and velocity of the laboratory Science 129 3349 621 to 624 Bibcode 1959 sci Point one two nine six hundred twenty one D. Doi ten point one one two six science point one two nine point three three four nine point six two one PMID seventeen million seven hundred thirty five thousand eight hundred eleven Dick R H nineteen forty six The measurement of thermal radiation at microwave frequencies Review of Scientific Instruments seventeen seven two hundred sixty eight to two hundred seventy five Bibcode, 1946RSCI. 1.17268D. doi, 10.1063.1.1770483. PMID 20,991,753. References. Sources. Kuhn J. R., Lebrecht K. G., Dick R. H. 1988. The Surface Temperature of the Sun and Changes in the Solar Constant. Science. 242 4880 908. Bibcode, 1988 Psi. 0.242, 908K. doi, 10.1126, science.242.4880.908. Williams J. G., Dick R. H., Bender P. L., Ali C. O., Curry D. G., Carter W. E., Eckhart D. H., Fowler J. E., Kala W. M., et al., 1976. New Test of the Equivalence Principle from Lunar Laser Ranging. Phys. Rev. Let. 36 11, 551. Bibcode, 1976 PHRVL, point three six five hundred fifty one w doi, 10.1103, physrevlet.36.551. Peebles P.J.E., Dick R.H. 1968. Origin of the Globular Star Clusters. Astrophys. J. 154-891. Bibcode, 1968 APJ. .154, p doi, 10.1086, 149811. Dick R. H. 1962. Max Principle and Invariance Under Transformation of Units. Phys. Rev. 125 6, 2163. Bibcode, 1962 PHRV, 125 2163D. doi, 10.1103, PhysRev.125.2163. External links National Academy of Sciences Biography Boss 29-1997-1469, Obituary A Look at the Abandoned Contributions to Cosmology of Dirac, Shama and Dick Archive, 0708. 3518 Oral History Interview Transcript with Robert Dick II of May 1983, American Institute of Physics, Niels Bohr Library and Archives Oral History Interview Transcript with Robert Dick 18 June 1985, American Institute of Physics, Niels Bohr Library and Archives.